I think again, it's uh, that this is just a pulmonary disease, and the other, the other issue that that really needs addressing that we that we are um, uh, going to target uh, here in New Orleans is that patients um, who seem to be doing fine pulmonary wise have other things going on that aren't being paid attention to. So you think somebody has stable uh, pulmonary function tests and then you kind of just think they're stable and you're not, you know, come back in a year or, but meanwhile they have ocular symptoms or they potentially have heart failure symptoms or neurologic symptoms and um, Yes, it, it, we need to stop compartmentalizing it, especially in areas with high prevalence of African Americans. Stop compartmentalizing in our minds and our approach to care that this is just a pulmonary disease. Yes, I, 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 absolutely. And um, one one concern that we have is that, that there really is a shortage of of sarcoid specialists. You know, in this big city. You know, uh, we, we we should be having more than we do, and and especially in areas like North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Um, it, one of our goals is to, in time, um, perhaps have um, a, a specialist training course, so that um, so that physicians can feel confident to establish a center in their area where people can get specialized care because it is overwhelming if you have someone with a, a multi-organ system disease and you're not used to uh, the the approach the algorithm keeping all the all the, uh, the the spectrum of possibilities and complications in your mind if it's not something you do every day it, it can be um, it can be very uh, challenging to have somebody walk through your door. So, um, that's one thing that we're hoping to be able to provide. They usually get seen by a pulmonologist. Um, thankfully, the Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research, um, which is founded by Ginger Spitzer in Chicago, and it was primarily a um, patient advocacy organization, and her husband has sarcoidosis, and her energy, what she did is she established this organization, and it is now um, a, a really a clearinghouse for education, uh, for patient education, for physician education, as well as for research and research funding. Um, so they are much more visible. Sarcoid is much more visible now, thanks to Ms. Spitzer. And so patients have this resource where they can go online and they can find the closest sarcoid specialist near them. And so, um, and actually that's how we get a lot of referrals and people fly in to see us or fly in to Cleveland or Chicago or, or Cincinnati or Albany. When we are able as a community to um, have a paradigm shift in our treatment with steroids, that this is a steroid treated only disease and our fear of, of DMARDs and when folks are not s responding to these um, steroid sparing DMARDs, we have very good studies in anti-tuber necrosis factor agents. Um, there are several other agents that we're looking at now of um, which are biologics and we're, we're primarily looking at biologics and um, their interference with what, with what we know about granuloma formation and the cytokines that are required to build granulomas and required to maintain them. Unfortunately, once um, fibrosis sets in, then we're talking about permanent symptoms and permanent disability. Um, and in, in, in very extreme cases in, in organ disease, we do look at transplant, lung transplant, um, uh, there may have been some heart transplant patients in the past. Mm -hmm. it, we don't have a lot of studies in transplanting sarcoidosis patients, but when people reach end-stage lung disease, um, it's, it's an important consideration, mm -hmm. or end-stage heart disease, or pulmonary hypertension. Mm -hmm. When someone receives an organ transplant, um, it, they, it is really their organ that's transplanted, and this is a systemic illness. So it's it would be on the onus of the uh, the the 
the, the treating physicians, including the transplant team, to hope and, and work on keeping the sarcoidosis um, uh, quiescent. We are also uh, looking at the new pulmonary hypertension drugs that are on the market. Uh, pulmonary hypertension is associated with sarcoidosis. Um, so that is a very hopeful field for those patients because um, that um, uh, it can, can rapidly lead to um, mortality. Number one, I would not say I'm leading. I have tremendous mentors, um, Madeira Swice, Bob Baufman, Dan Culver, um, Marjolaine Drent in Netherlands. Um, uh, our sarcoid center, though, uh, we, we are we're full strength, and um, we 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 stand here because of the training of, of of other experts. But what it means to me is an honor. Um, it's an honor to be able to provide those services, and it's also an honor to be to be in um, a situation. Uh, where we can increase awareness, especially in this community, when you when you speak with somebody and they say, um, "Oh, I know someone that has sarcoidosis," um, it, it's it's an honor, and it, I feel it's a way that I'm compelled to use my career and my life. We have a high patient population here. We tend to be where um, patients come, and uh, trying to accommodate them is a very important um, consideration. Um, and so we are continually working with scheduling and the hospital to make sure. In terms of Tulane itself, um, I can't think of a better place. Our um, lung center is a pulmonary fibrosis center of excellence. We have state-of-the-art, not only equipment, but, but everything in terms of diagnostics for a patient is set up such that it is it is at least burdensome as possible for the patient. So they're not running off to re-register to go get a CAT scan. They're not running off to re-register to get pulmonary function tests. You know, when a patient sees me, I just um, toodaloo down the hall to get what I want, and um, the patient um, walks a few steps to get pulmonary function tests. And my colleagues at Tulane are, um, are astounding. Um, I work very closely with cardiology, um, um, and, you know, I work in pulmonary, and we have um, several several doctors there who see sarcoidosis and and really manage sarcoidosis like an expert manages sarcoidosis. They are experts. We are close with our neuro neurology team and and our and our ophthalmology team. Um, it is a great place to be if you're a patient with sarcoidosis.